Well, every year I stand here on Senior Day and go over the graduation schedule for the following week. And without fail, when I read out the moment you'll walk away from good old Redmont High forever, I get a huge round of applause. <laughs> I must be some terrific speaker, huh? <laughs> well, now we come to the pièce de résistance, the Lawrence Endicott Award for the Outstanding Graduating Senior. This year we have an especially deserving recipient, I think. Not just because she's a fine student and writer and leader, or that her list of accomplishments in your yearbook is as long as Richie Glover's hair. <laughs> but because she's achieved all of these things while remaining simply a young woman, committed to family, friends, and the importance of growth. Someday, when the tapestry of Redmont High's history is finished, there'll be a small thread of gold woven through the past four years. And that shining thread is our Endicott Award winner this year, Lynette Janice Peterson. Are you sure this is for me? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, thank you so so much. I'm really honored to receive this award. And uh, there are a lot of people that I wanted to thank for it, teachers and friends, but they'll all have to wait while I uh, thank the people that really deserve this, my mom and dad. You're the best. Thanks, mom and dad. This is for you. Face. Whatever I happen to say, cheese, huh? <laughs> Just remember, darling, when you're rich and famous, I intend to remind you that I once changed your diapers. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Trust me, this is a Rembrandt. Thanks a lot, Mrs. Peterson. I, I've got to go. Yeah. I'll see you about 6.30. David, happy birthday. Have a big night. Big night? Tacos at Ernie's? Any time he lets me go out, it's a big night. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Dad, that's supposed to be a surprise. I didn't know, Lenny. Did I know? I told you a week ago. Lynn is giving David a surprise party at Deanna's. Ernie's is the cover story. Cover story? This family is watching too much television. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. Right on schedule, Carl. It looks terrific. Oh, thanks, Mr. Fisk. I put three more guys on Kenny's first, so we ought to be through bricking by the tent. Great. Just in time to start the Broadview project. Got that job. Yeah. You just made an old country boy real happy. <laughs> hey, how's Connie? Is she feeling any better? Oh, some of the time. Got a little worried this morning. Her blood pressure was up. She's tough. She'll be okay. Could you do me a favor? Sure, whatever you say. Take the rest of the day off. Go home. Give Connie a squeeze for me. Go on. That's why the boss makes the big bucks. He makes all those tough decisions. The thing is, David, that Northwestern has just about the best journalism department in the whole world. And an opportunity like this is... I never expected to get in in the first place. And it's not that I don't love you. Honey. Hi. I was just getting ready to go. No. I just came up to tell you how proud I am of you. What, for my Texas champagne glass, as David calls it? For that? For being smart enough to get a scholarship offer? And sweet enough to go ahead with your plans for David's party, even though you may disappoint him later on? Yeah, if I ever get the guts to tell him about it. Well, you know, the longer you wait, the harder it's going to be. Yeah, I know, but... Well, he went to tech for me. We made plans. Well, he's aware you were applying for other colleges. 20 minutes. Movie starts at 6. We'll be down in two minutes, huh? Amy's spending the night at Claudius. We gotta drop her. Well, I'll do it. It's on my way. Would you, honey? That'd be terrific. Thank you. Amy, are you ready? Lynn said she could take you. Okay, Mom. I'll be right there. You know, my dad once said, 
Guarantees come with toasters, not life. Going off to college doesn't mean the end of David, especially if he really cares for you. As far as that goes, staying here doesn't mean happy ever after. Hmm? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Smile when you say that, partner. <laughs> Thank you. Whoa. That's my baby. Come on. Mom, when are you going to make me a dress like Lenny's? When you graduate. Guess we don't have to rush out and buy the material. <laughs> so far, Amy's the only one that's on time. That's because I'm the only one who plans my evenings. Mom, the dress is beautiful. Hi, oh, yes. The lace was on sale. I thought it was just what it needed. And it's perfect. Good Lord. Seamstress, photographer, film buff. Have a Renaissance parent. Sure, now you notice. Now when you're ready to leave home. I'll let you in on a secret. I always knew you were the best mom in the whole world. Anything. He sure didn't act like it. Well, he's very noble. We're very simple. Young lady, I want you in bed by 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? She gets to stay out till 1. That's discrimination. That's showbiz. Hey, hon. Good luck tonight with David. Thanks for everything. Have fun. Behave. I'm depressed enough. I'm telling you, there better be a way out soon. Of course there's a way out, and it's as American as apple pie. What's that? Bankruptcy. No, I couldn't do anything <laughs> like that. That's well, not... Why not? Everybody's doing it. All my competitors do. One minute they file for bankruptcy, and the next minute they're across town building an apartment house with a different name stamped in the truck. <laughs> yeah, but I'd be too embarrassed to do anything like that. Come on, Max. It's a tough world. Take advantage of any break you can get. <laughs> Can I bring out anything else? <laughs> I think no. we're flying out. Look the time. It's quarter to six. Oh, my gosh. Mary's going to skip me alive. I promise the kids are barbecue with me. Oh, you got plenty of time. It doesn't get dark until nine. Yeah, but my kids get hungry at three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get this. Uh, Max, you think I'm going to let you pick up this tab with all your problems? It's nonsense. Bryce will pick up the tab. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> How is it I get the honors, huh? Because Max is bankrupt and I've already spent my allowance. Oh. <laughs> Say hi to Claudia for me. Lenny, when you go away to college, can I have your room? Well, what happens when I come home on vacations? Well, then we'll share it. All right. Sounds like a good deal to me. Thanks. Have a good time. Thank you. Next time, bring your clubs, Tom. We'll play some golf. Are you kidding? I've got a $60 putter and a handicap to match. I only joined for the fringe benefits. Well, take it easy. Thanks for the advice. Anything for a friend, amigo. go with Lynn. Okay, I guess. She's a little nervous about going away from home and about telling David she's leaving. And your advice? I told him, tell him straight out now. If he doesn't understand, just come and let me know, and I'll send you to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Becoming cloudy tonight, below 58. most of the day, giving way to sunshine before the day is through. High temperatures ranging from 70 to 75 during the day, 65 to 69 at night. And for tomorrow morning, clouds and some hazy afternoon sunshine, high 70 to 74. On the financial scene, stock prices open slightly lower today after a strong showing.
Real bad. Hey, can you hear me? Hang in there, kid. <coughs> Anybody call an ambulance? It's coming. Where are you going? Hey, mister. Hey, you shouldn't be leaving. I tried to stop him, but he just kept walking. I pulled him out. I gotta tell you, you smell like a still. Mary, I've had an accident. No, 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 I'm not really hurt, but somebody else is. Look, will you just come and pick me up, please? I'm on Langley. I'm south of the... No. I'm, I'm north of the lake near Brockton. Uh, yeah, he passed me on this drive, and okay. I didn't see anything until I hit the corner there. Hey, wait a minute, there he is. Excuse me, sir. Will you drive the station wagon? Yes. But it wasn't my license, please. <laughs> you see this kid on a bicycle back right there. Why'd you leave the accident scene? I went to call my wife. What's wrong with that? Mr. Fisk, have you consumed any alcoholic beverages within the last six hours? No. Well, I had a couple of drinks, but nothing heavy. How about walking this line for me, sir? Walking? <laughs> My leg is killing me. You expect me to walk? Tell you what, Mr. Fisk, I'll take you to the hospital for treatment. While you're there, you can have your choice of three tests to check your blood alcohol level. I had two drinks, Maxim. Honest. To the car, sir. What about the other driver? You sure as hell better test them, too. Slide to the far door, sir. Watch your head. Involved in a collision on Langley Road. This... Step away from the car, ma'am. Well, that's my husband in there. Ma'am, your husband is being placed under arrest for suspicion of driving while intoxicated. Now, I'm going to take him to the hospital for a check first. 
Tom, are you all right? I think I've old deed on anti-heroes. Whatever happened to John Wayne? Mm. Channel 11, maybe? Ooh, dare we hope. Mm. It has to be the first movie I ever left early in my life. We can always go back. Are you kidding? With an empty house all to ourselves. Oh. No wonder it was so easy to get you out of there. A better show at home never occurred to you? From the moment we left. Am I your favorite anti-hero? You are my hero, period. Mm. I'll pop the corn. You pop the wine. Mm? Funny, but when you're near me, I'm in the mood for... Where's the popper? In the bottom. Hello. Yes, this is he. She's been in surgery 30 minutes or so. We don't have any further word. It's going to be all right, Judith. Don't worry about it. Could you tell us how it happened? Well, the accident occurred on Langley Road, someone said. Beyond that, I don't know. Dr. There's a doctor now. Please report to ICU. Dr. Graffy, please report to ICU. Mr. and Mrs. Peterson, yes. I'm Dr. Sandler. There was massive internal bleeding. I'm terribly sorry. We did everything possible. Concussion, fractures, broken bones, or uh, bleeding. Yeah. Signed for his blood sample, and he's all yours. Can I get out of here now? Hands behind your back, Mr. Fisk. What do you mean? Hands behind my back? I'm no criminal. You got no right to treat me like a criminal. Let's go, sir. Please let her sleep tonight, and I'll pick her up in the morning. No, it's all uh, I can handle, and I'll tell her. Thank you. Night in jail hasn't improved any since the Navy. Did you call that lawyer? Jennings recommended. We're supposed to meet with him on Thursday. Who'd you tell the kids? That the doctor wanted you to spend the night in the hospital. Good okay, girl. I don't know what I'd do without you. Anything in the papers? Just your name. Nothing about you being drunk. Drunk? <laughs> I had a couple of drinks, that's all. But you were drinking, Tom. It's not like it's the first time. Mary, what are you trying to do? A terrible thing happened last night. I feel awful about it. You don't have to make me feel worse. Now, this could have happened to anybody. Drinking didn't have anything to do with it. I wasn't drunk. Linda wanted a grilled cheese sandwich, then Diane, then Megan, 
but all they had was cream cheese. So Claudia decides to grill the cream cheese. And it was so messy. Why are we stopping? Amy. A terrible thing's happened to our family. Lenny was in a car accident on her way to David's party. She in the hospital? She was. But... She okay? Daddy? Is Lenny dead? Daddy? Yes. No, she's not. I don't believe you. She can't be dead. I'm just lying. She's my sister. She's not dead. She's not. But how could she be in an accident? She got an A in driver's ed. And she's such a good driver. John, aren't you gonna stay? It's a lot to do, hon. Well, when are you coming back? As soon as I can. Excuse me, Sergeant Hartman? Oh, yes, sir. I'm John Peterson. Uh, they told me down at the station I could find you here. Peterson? Her father. Uh, right. Uh, I'm very sorry, Mr. I, uh... Peterson. <laughs> I was hoping maybe you could tell me just how it happened. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm afraid it's not very mysterious. Uh, uh, impact point is there. And uh, vehicle two... Bridge the double yellow, and he hit her head on. He hit her? Yes, sir, in her lane. He was booked on a DWI. A what? Driving while intoxicated. I'm sorry, I, I thought you knew.
It was a lovely service, John. Are you all right? John, I'm just, uh, so sorry. Listen, I stopped by the sheriff's station and picked up their report. Do you have it with you? Oh, yeah, it's out in the car. May I see it? Sure, but we can go over that tomorrow. Honey, I'm going with Steve to look at the sheriff's report. Now? It's just out to his car. But these people came here for us, John. Sure, I'll be right back. Judy, if there's anything we can do. Where's John? Uh, he left for a little while. Well, tell him to take some time off. I can handle the business. That's what partners are for. Thank you, Reese. We do need John here now. Please, call any time. This says his blood alcohol content was 0.19. How much is that? That's like drinking about... Uh, Eight shots of booze in an hour. My God, what was he doing behind wheel? Why didn't somebody stop him? I've been a lawyer for 26 years, John. No one ever stops him. Can we take him to court? Say the word. Do what you can. No. Do everything you can. Man filled himself with booze, climbed in his car, and killed my daughter. No one should be able to get away with that. Oh. There's a couple of uh, forms you need to sign to get us started. Uh, I'll stop by in the morning. Good. You'll be at the house, right? No. I'm going to go to work. Please drop them off at the nursery, Steve, would you? Sure. Oh, Steve, we want to prosecute the driver of the other car. Did you do? Honey, I'm sorry. I was only gone for a while. A while? Judith. All day yesterday. the day before. Where's Amy? Where's Amy? Upstairs. I want Lenny, Daddy. I want Lenny. I know you do, honey. We all do. <sighs> what are we gonna do now? We're gonna get up tomorrow. You're gonna go to your day camp, and I'm going to work. And we'll just keep on going. When I wake up in the morning, all I can think about is her car crashing. Maybe. Maybe someday you'll just think about the happy things with Lenny and, and it won't hurt so much. 
But when? When does it stop hurting? We've got witnesses and a positive blood test. Uh, clearly, the guy was negligent. There's, uh, there's no problem there. Where is the problem? Well, I guess the only problem is that uh, you're my friend, and uh, suddenly I can't muster the usual swagger. The truth is that uh, wrongful death suits can take years. And there's pain involved, and a good possibility you'll lose both the case and a truckload of money. Where do we start? By drawing up our complaint. Uh, understand it's a little early to start uh, talking about amounts right now, but... Uh, amounts? What amounts? Well, compensatory damages. How much we're going to sue for? I don't care about money. I want the man in jail. Well, you're talking about the criminal trial. Of course. What are you talking about? Well, the, the civil suit. Well, I'm sorry. Let me explain. There are two trials. The criminal and ours. I, I have nothing to do with prosecuting the man criminally. Well, who represents me at the criminal trial? Well, the DA's office downtown. Now, I can only launch our civil suit for a wrongful death. Now, wait a minute. Maybe I'm the one that's not being clear. I don't care about a civil suit. And no amount of money we may win from is going to stop what I feel. Or stop him from going out tomorrow and running over someone else. Lenny didn't die of cancer. She wasn't struck by lightning. He killed her, Steve. He's responsible. Prison. Nothing less. In the DA's case, there's not much you can do, John. Uh, there's even a chance there won't be a criminal trial. Why? Well, sometimes, a lot of the times, these things wind up in plea bargaining. Uh, it's, it's hard to say. It's the DA's ball game. All right. What do I see down there? Well, I assume an assistant will be assigned to your case. Which one? Whoever's next at bat. How much? Mr. Webster, I've built entire condos for less than that. Are you serious? Mr. Fisk, I'm always serious about manslaughter. <coughs> We're talking about a lot of time. We're also talking about a possible prison sentence. Is it tax deductible? Is it business expense? Not legally. It's a lot of money, Counselor. Well, you're in a lot of trouble, Mr. Fisk. Driving while intoxicated, that's a pretty hot issue. The state is cracking down, the press is on our backs, there are pressure groups. Look, I'll save us both some time. This past year, I've represented 31 DWIs, as we call them. All but two were acquitted, reduced, or thrown out. Now, I think I can help you, but if you want to look elsewhere, I can understand. My phone isn't going to stop ringing, I can assure you. So it's up to you. Okay. Good. Now, we're not dealing here with a routine DWI. I'm not going to minimize this. There's a death involved. That's always the roughest sledding of all. I'm paying you a fortune to listen to this. Look, I'm a responsible businessman. I never hurt anybody before. I had two <clears throat> drinks, the same as my friends Bryce and Max. They got home okay. Unfortunately, the police tested your blood. What about Tom's driving record? Will that hurt him in court? No, that's not admissible in this state, I'm happy to say. There's no way a jury can be influenced by his previous behavior. Look, see, here's what we have going for us. There's hardly a prospective juror anywhere who hasn't at least once started his car with one too many drinks under his belt. That's our advantage. Well, that should be. It was an accident. Why should a guy have to give up his liberty and his pursuit of happiness for something that wasn't even his fault? That's well said. That's just the way we'll tell it to the jury. Two weeks. Can I help you? Yes, my name is John Peterson. I was wondering if I could see the person handling my daughter's case. Her name Peterson, too? Yeah. And what does she manage to do? Get killed. I'm sorry. Is that murder? Industrial accident? What? No, she was hit by a drunk driver, a man by the name of Fisk. That would be vehicular manslaughter. Here we are. State versus Fisk. Deputy District Attorney Sawyer has... Can I case. see him? I'm sorry, he's already in court. With 
with Fisk? No, I doubt it. It's a little early for Fisk yet. See, Mr. Sawyer's got 30 cases or so going on right now. Yeah, um, I don't see it. Look, I can I can take a message for him if you want. No, that's all right. I just uh, was wondering if there was something I could do to clarify this. Well, we do try and keep in touch with the families, Mr. Peterson. Peterson. I'm sure you'll be hearing from Mr. Sawyer. I'll let him know that you were in. Excuse me. Fine. Where's mom? Yes. Mom? Tell Lynn there's some ground beef in the... Aunt, why don't you come and have dinner with Amy and me? Okay, come on. I'm not hungry. Well, Amy's worked so hard. I'm tired, John. Judith, you haven't been out of bed for days. Kitchen shelves are empty. Lynn's room hasn't been touched yet. How much longer you... I don't know. As long as it takes. you will fit me into your checklist, John. Yes, I have a checklist. We can't all hide our heads in the sand. Who's hiding, John? I've stayed right here and faced your ghost every day. But good old John... Give him a crisis and there's no job too small to fill his day. Just as long as he doesn't have to cry or hurt or feel. That man killed our child, Judith. I'll do whatever it takes to see him in court. All you have to do is go to the trial. I'll leave that to you, John. You can handle it with your usual skill. Judith, you're not even getting up for the trial. What's the point? The point? Justice is the point. Justice. What could they possibly do to that man to make up for my daughter? What would you like me to do? Forgive and forget? That bastard slaughtered our child. And I hope God damns his eternal soul for it. But whether he does or the court, it won't help Lynn now. It'll help me. Then you go, John. You wallow in it. But leave me out of it. Leave me alone. The um, Oregon distributor called, said he still hasn't heard from you. Any problems? It's time. I'll phone him tomorrow. Got a message for you from Mr. Sawyer's office. District Attorney. Right. They said the state versus Fisk is scheduled for 9 o'clock, the 14th in District Court. Oh, thanks, Mr. Thanks. All right. William Wilson, Larry Chernoff, Officer Evan Cassidy. No, 
else there is. Is that his attorney? No, sir, that's the prosecutor. Mr. Fisk will be sitting at the left, that table over there. All rise for the Honorable Marion Roth. Be seated. Is the prosecution prepared to begin? Yes, Your Honor. Defense counsel? The defense would request a continuance, Your Honor. Our independent experts have been unable to complete their evaluations of certain uh, police and hospital reports. This information is vital to the proper and adequate defense of my client. Will 30 days be sufficient? Oh, yes, Your Honor. Does the prosecution have any objection to a continuance at this time? No, Your Honor, but the state would like the record to show that we're ready to begin. Duly noted. The bench requests all required participants return to this court on the 16th of July. All rise. Excuse me, Mr. Sawyer. I'm John Peterson. We've been missing a few phone calls. I was just wondering if I could have a minute of your time. Sure, what can I do for you? I, I thought there was supposed to be a trial today. Well, it's just a usual routine delay, you know. A uh, man pled not guilty to vehicular manslaughter. Uh, not guilty? When did this happen? I was here all the time. Three weeks ago at the arraignment hearing. What arraignment hearing? I, I wasn't notified. Well, my office didn't call you? No. Look, I'm sorry. Oh, look, I gotta run. Um... Good talking to you. Mr. Sawyer, I, I wanted to ask you something. I was down at your office, and I, I could see you folks down there have your hands full. And I was just wondering if there's anything I could do. Call some witnesses, do some late work. No, look, they... we got professionals to take care of all of that. Now, don't worry. Now, I'll see you again in 30 days. We start then. Amy, hey, hey. ready for dinner? Yeah. Excuse me. Chicken again? I'm sorry. They were out of beef Wellington. And maple feathers. Hmm. It's all this stuff. Well, these law books are from our attorney, Steve Balfour, and these papers I picked up from the safety council. What for? The trial was delayed, and I got a taste of what we're up against, so I thought I'd do some homework. On your own? Without anybody telling you to? Yep. Where's your mother? Upstairs. You're supposed to take me to Claudia's slumber party. Oh, Amy. I've got to get these books back to the library by morning. Why can't she take you? She said she had a bad day. But I don't mind not going to Claudia's, Dad. I really don't. That's all right. Finish your dinner. I'll take it. So good. Oh, it's better, huh? Hmm? Well, maybe Claudia's mom has some chocolate milk. It might help. No, Daddy, I changed my mind. Come I don't want to go. Please, I've got a lot of work to do no, tonight. No, Daddy, I don't want to stay here. Amy, I want to go be with good you. For you. I haven't seen Claudia no, since. No, Daddy, don't make me stay here by myself. Please, I want to go with you. Please. I won't. Amy's not at Claudia's. She's upstairs. Why? I drove her over earlier, and she was upset, scared, and I think she thought that the same thing was going to happen to me that happened to her sister. Yeah. 
John. It's been weeks, Judy. John, I can't help it. You've got nothing left to give. This thing affected your business yet? My business, no. Why should it? Well, it shouldn't, but... Damn, I mean, it just seems like every time you turn around these days, there, there's some magazine story or some gal ranting on TV about drinking and driving. Well, it hasn't hurt my business as far as I know. It shouldn't either. Damn it, people know me. They know what I stand for. I'm not some street corner alcoholic. Look, I'm sure this guy Webster knows what he's doing. At 200 bucks an hour, he'd better. Two? It's not a fee. That's a retirement plan. Not from where I am. If I go to trial and lose, it's four years on the manslaughter charge alone. Come on, what judge is going to send a man like you to jail for an accident? Uh, I just can't take that chance. I've worked too damn hard from the time I was 15 years old digging foundations. I'm not going to give all that up. Who pays the mortgage if I go to jail? Who's going to pay the kids' doctor bills? You know... It's not fruit juice in that glass of yours. It could happen to you as well as me. What would you do? Hire the best damn lawyer I could find. As long as he took credit cards. <laughs> I'm going to buy myself another drink. What's with the poor man's toter? I promised Mary nothing more than a soda can would touch my lips. I always keep my promises. <laughs> Oh, you act like you haven't eaten in a month. I haven't. Not stuff this good. You're dressed. Oh. I've discovered Peterson's paradox. If you stay in bed long enough, you get tired of it. Want to go to court today? Well, Helen's been after me to come over and, uh... I owe Amy a tennis lesson and I... I thought maybe later I'd get started on the room. Can we get going with the state versus Fisk? Where's the prosecutor? Anyone seen Sawyer? Glad you could join us, sir. <coughs> You've had ample time to study your reports, Mr. Webster? We have, Your Honor. Then I trust you're ready to begin? Yes, Your Honor. Good. And the prosecution is ready. Um... No, Your Honor. Just found out that Deputy Kasky is out of town finishing special training. Counselor, didn't your office coordinate the trial date with the sheriff's office? Well, I thought so, Your Honor, but there seemed to have been a mix-up somewhere, and... Since his testimony is vital to the state, we reluctantly request a continuance. Mr. Sawyer. Oh, you're here. I I'm sorry. I told my secretary to call you yesterday. Who yes. takes care of your calendar, Mr. Sawyer? Elmer Fudd? Look, she's overworked. She's underpaid. Well, I'm not. Coordinating with the sheriff's department is exactly the kind of thing I offered to do for you last month. It's our job, Mr. Peterson. Then do it! You're playing right into Fisk's hands. Every time there's a delay, witnesses get fuzzy, facts get lost. Sympathy shift, elementary law, Mr. Peterson. I don't need that from a layman. Why are you treating me like an outsider? She's hey, my hey, daughter. Hey, 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 look. I understand your situation. Now, you got to understand mine. Now, I've got over 30 cases going on at the same time, and every client thinks his case is the most important in the world. Now, if you don't like the way your case is going, take it up with my boss. It's been tried before, and without success, I might add, because I know what I'm doing. Now, beyond that, my advice to you is to keep in mind that my office is the one shot you have at Thomas Fisk. And maybe you should act accordingly, okay? Yeah. Okay, I mean, just, just so we have an understanding. I'll see you in four weeks. If it means anything, I know how you feel. Hey, Mr. Sawyer, just a minute. Oh. Uh, you're right. You're the only chance I've got, so I'll deal with you. And I'll deal with the ignored phone calls and the legal lectures. I'll even deal with being treated like a punch card by your office. But don't you dare! Don't you dare tell me you know how I feel. I won't accept that. Look, 
I only meant that I have two children of my own, and if I lost... I didn't lose a child. She was taken from me. She was murdered. And burying her was the hardest thing I've ever had to do, and I hope you never have to know what I feel like, Mr. Sawyer. That I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. John. Look, I'm not your enemy. I'm your representative. Now, sometimes I get so caught up in the race, I forgot why I even entered. I'll do everything I can to bring your daughter's killer to justice, but that's all I can do. That's all I ask. Loading needed for the customer service dock. John? John, what the devil happened to the Reiner account? His order was short this morning. He couldn't find anyone to straighten it out, so I get a call from the tree farm saying he's pulling his business. You realize that's $100,000 a year in landscaping, John? Reese. Where were you? Down a court. On a delay. John, I, I know you want to get this guy, but what more can you do? I don't know. Sales John. Needed at the front desk, please. Maybe the best thing to do now is just to let go. I'm sorry, Reese. I'll call Art Reiner and salvage whatever I can. Get your racket back sooner. Oh. And when you do your back, well, let's see. Oh, don't do that. Okay. See, did you notice that? Did you see how you didn't uh -huh. do it? And also, you're not keeping your eye on the ball. Now, don't twist your wrist on your backhand. How do you get it over the net, huh? Hit the ball. You're really doing very well. That's much better. You see what that follow through means? Oh, I'm tired. I'd like to quit. Too much lying around. I'm out of shape. I thought you did good. Maybe if we come back again tomorrow, you'll do even better. If I can walk. Judith, how are you? Meredith, I thought you were in Spain. In Portugal, got back last night, cast nets and all. <laughs> I haven't seen you since Karen and Lynn's play. Yeah, I guess so. Miss Lynn, has she picked out of college yet? Um, Lynn, um, seven weeks ago, um... Mom? Mommy? What's the matter? Mommy! Hey, come on, guys. You missed the first inning. Where have you been? O'Malley's. Some guy thinks I ought to build his apartments for a nickel a square foot. Tom, <laughs> have you been drinking? Honey, you don't do business over soda pop. Tom, you promise, honey. Look, I'm not going to live the rest of my life like a saint just because I made one mistake. Get out of the car now, boys. Stay right where you are. I you guys, you stay going. right where you are. No, Tom, Mary, please. Tom, please. Mary, please. you guys, stay right where you are. Tom, Mary, please. I'm taking my boys to the baseball game. Tom, Tom, boys, I'm please. taking my boys to the ball game. Now get out of the way. Come on, Tom. Today I've heard I'm sorry. Everybody's sorry, but nobody does a damn thing about it. You 
just sit there, Judith. I'll take care of this. No. No, let me help you. Here's your tennis trophy. Put that away. We'll just forget about when she wanted to cry. Oh! Pack this. I certainly don't want to think about all the letters and stories she wrote. Judith, it has to be done. And get rid of the dress. Who wants to remember her classmates and graduation and her prom and the play? I will not turn this house into a mausoleum. So we just pack her up and put her out of our lives, right, John? Everything put away except the truth. We're never going to forget what happened. Not as long as we live. Okay, guys. Right up to bed now. Come on. Hey, get going. I'll say goodnight for you. We're back. Extra innings, wouldn't you know? Kids may have had the hot dogs, but I think I got all the mustard. <laughs> it's typical, eh? Mm. You have a problem, Tom, and you've got to get help. Honey, the only problem we have is the trial. Once that's over, everything's going to be beautiful. You drink too much, Tom. We've been over this again and again and again. Now, booze is a fact of life. And it's taken over our life. Damn it. I don't drink any more than the next guy. I am sick and tired of being made to feel like a drunk. You, you killed a girl, Tom. Don't you think I know that? I wake up every night seeing that girl's face in that wreck. It's, it, it's like a knife in me. Now, a thousand times I wanted that day back, but it happened. The girl is dead and we have to survive. For how long? Till it happens again. If I'd stood up before, that girl would still be alive. Stood up? What do you mean? <sighs> get help, Tom. I'll go with you anywhere. Just get help. Or I swear to God, I'm leaving you and I'm taking the children. Honey, don't ever say anything like that. <sighs> Nothing in my life means anything to me but you and the kids. Now, every time something's happened, you've stood by me. Stand by me this one last time, and I swear to you, it will never happen again. I promise. I never feel like the big time. I've got a cabinet at home you do wonders for. <laughs> Judith, I've missed you. I tried to call. It's been a while, I guess. Well, how are you? I'm fine. I'm all right, you know, for a while, and, uh, 
And then I'll find a hair ribbon in the dryer or an old picture. Then the hurt starts again. And the anger. You have a right to be angry, Judith. But it's eating me alive. See, I've got nothing left inside of me except rage. At John, at Amy, at everybody. At me. Why you? I knew Lynn would volunteer to take Amy if I mentioned it. See, if we had just taken Amy... I... Lynn would be alive today, right? Judith, a million circumstances put Lynn on that spot, in that road, at that exact time. You can't claim them all. But she didn't deserve to die. No, she didn't. We can't alter what's happened, Judith. In the end, all we can do is move beyond how our loved ones died. Have you talked to John about how you feel? No. He wouldn't understand? Uh, John wouldn't have time. He's busy with uh, trials and uh, lawyers and God knows what. Why do you suppose he's doing that, Judith? He's doing it for himself, not for anybody else. Is it possible he's doing what he has to do to get through Lenny's death? How can he stand it? How can he relive the same horrible details over and over? I can't face it. You're not John. There's no right or wrong way to grieve, Judith. You must each find your own way. you're trying to do has to be done. I was wrong about that before. But what if this quest takes us over and becomes uglier and worse than what happened to Lynn? Judith, don't ask me to stop. If I do, then Lynn is just another st statistic and I can't, I can't let it end that way. I'm not asking you to stop. I'm asking you to talk to me, to keep caring and loving me. Please don't ever stop loving me, John. Choose, choose. Oh. <laughs> I was afraid you had stopped. But you blame me as much as I blame myself. Never. Never. There's only one person to blame for all this, and it's never been you. While I'm gone, tell him. Don't make too much of this. I'm no hero.
You want a what? A continuance, Your Honor. Our expert witness in the field of gas chromatography method of blood testing, Dr. Granger, is testifying in California. He's not the only expert in this area, Counselor. No, Your Honor, but he is our preference. And he was available 30 days ago when the prosecution was without their witnesses. Will you gentlemen approach the bench, please? All right, you're even. Now listen carefully. I want to go with this in three weeks, September the 12th. No excuses, no delays. Understand? Yes, sir. Sure. Well, I don't like the delay, but I had a couple of new ideas lately. At least this will give my investigators time to check them out. Great. Turn every stone you can bet Webster will. My God. He's driving his car. Well, he still has a license. For now. His blood test proves he was drunk. The sheriff's report shows that he was at fault in a fatality. As far as that goes, he's got two prior DWIs, but he's innocent. Until proven guilty, that's the law. Are you telling me that man was arrested twice before for drunk driving? I'm afraid so. John? Fisk, where do you get the guts? Who gave you the moral right to sit behind that wheel? How the hell do you sleep at night? I sleep fine. Get the hell out of the way! And you... How do you sleep knowing that this man may go out tomorrow morning and do the same thing again to some helpless child? Tell me how! Come on! Go ahead. Off. This is John Peterson. The State versus Fisk trial starts today. My wife and I just wanted to make sure that your son Larry would be there. His testimony is extremely important. But well, he will be great. No, I was just double checking. Thank you very much. John, keep your hopes reasonable. All right, Larry, you were riding your bike along Brockton Lane about a half a mile from Langley Road. Then what happened? This station wagon came out of nowhere, and it swerved around me clear into the other lane. And then? I heard a crash, and I got to the intersection, and I saw this wreck, and Mr. Wilson was helping the driver out of the station wagon. Is the driver you saw being helped from the station wagon in this courtroom? Yeah, he's um, that man in the blue suit. Thank you. Larry, I'm curious. On Brockton Lane, when the station wagon passed you and uh, swerved. You riding your bike off the pavement? Uh, no. I'm kind of on the right-hand side. How many lanes are on that road? Uh, just two. Yeah, two lanes. Well, then, any vehicle coming up behind you, in order to avoid hitting you, would have to move out into the middle of the road, correct? Uh, yeah, I guess so. So, after you helped Mr. Fisk out of the station wagon, Mr. Wilson, did you notice anything out of the ordinary about it? Yes, I did. What was that? I smelled alcohol on his breath. Did he say anything to you at that point? He asked if anybody called an ambulance. I told him yes. Was there anything unusual about the way he spoke? Yes, his words seemed slurred. Now, you say you smelled alcohol on Mr. Fisk's breath. Could you tell me if it was a beverage with a high alcoholic content? No. Did you tell me how much alcohol Mr. Fisk had consumed? No, I can't. You say Mr. Fisk's speech was impaired. Just what did Mr. Fisk say to you before the police arrived? Did anybody call an ambulance? How many words is that? Five. Had Mr. Fisk said anything to you before that evening? No. Are you a linguist, Mr. Wilson? No, I'm not. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Well, I just want you to know you're doing great, man. Just great. You know? Oh, thank you, John. I mean, this guy, Webster, is a pretty tough cookie, isn't he? Yeah, he's pretty tough, but I'd say we're holding on. Yeah, we just got to... Listen, John, just try and relax. Now, we got good witnesses. I got a good dossier, a .19 blood count. That's right. Just stay loose, huh? I'll let you know when to start worrying. 
So after the accident and the hospital, I took Mr. Fisk to the station along with his blood sample. I booked Mr. Fisk, and later that morning, I forwarded the blood sample to the county lab. Have you received the results of this analysis? Yes, I have. Do you have the report with you? Yes, I do. Your Honor, at this time, I would move emission of the defendant's blood analysis into evidence. Objection, Your Honor. You object, Counselor? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, may we approach the bench? You may approach. We'll find that out. I was the president of the jury. What's going on? Something's wrong. Hard, Mr. Sawyer, relax. Does he look relaxed? It's going to be embarrassing. I think that you should first have a look at this before we... Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, a technical matter has been brought to the court's attention. This requires me to rule on an issue of law. During the inquiry, I would like you to retire to the jury room for a brief period of time. Thank you. Deputy Caskey, on the night of the accident, what time did you arrive at your station with Mr. Fisk to book him? 11 o'clock. And you brought his blood sample with you at that time? From the hospital, yes. Now, you said you submitted his blood sample to the lab the next day. When? About 9.30 in the morning. So you had the blood sample in your office for ten and a half hours? That's about right, sir. Were you in your office the whole ten and a half hours? Yes, I was, sir. Well, except for the call. What call? After we uh, booked Mr. Fisk, I was called out of the station on an emergency involving an uh, armed robbery. Until when? About 6.30 in the morning. And when you returned from this emergency call, where was Mr. Fisk's blood then? On my desk where we left it. We put it in the locker, we ate breakfast, and I sent it to the lab with a morning run. So the entire time you were away on this emergency call, Mr. Fisk's blood was on your desk. At the station, right. Unattended. And it, well, not exactly. And there's always deputies there. There's always someone in the... These other deputies, do they sometimes use your desk when you're away from it? Sometimes. For what purpose? Well, interviewing witnesses, booking suspects, but they never... So it's entirely possible, isn't it, that while you were away from your desk for six and a half hours, leaving Mr. Fisk's blood sample unattended, that somebody else could have tampered with it? There is no way anyone would have fooled with that particular... Are you aware, Deputy because... Kasky, that departmental regulations require you to place any unattended blood sample in security locker for safekeeping? Yes, but we didn't have a chance, and there is no way... I have nothing like... further at this time, Your Honor. Deputy Caskey, was it an emergency which caused you to leave your station before securing the sample? Yes, it was. Was the sample on your desk when you returned? Yes, it was. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Your Honor, I object to the admission of this... Uh exhibit into evidence. We simply do not know if this very crucial piece of evidence is valid. Your Honor, it is highly improbable that the sample was tampered with at any time. It was in the sheriff's station, guarded by official personnel. With all respect, Counselor, we have these regulations for a purpose. During the time that Mr. Fisk's blood sample was unsecured, no one can say for sure what happened to it. Not Deputy Caskey, not you, not me. No one. Well, while what happened at the station was probably understandable, it's most unfortunate. Obviously, the regulations for securing the sample weren't complied with. I rule, therefore, the dependent's blood sample cannot be received into evidence. The objection is sustained. One hour recess for lunch. All rise. Webster's unbelievable. My God. There is no way the jury is going to know Fisk blood alcohol level now is there. I'm afraid not. Then how do we prove he was drunk when he hit Lynn? How do we prove he's guilty? Right now, our circumstantial evidence is good. Nobody saw the crash, but we got good witnesses. I don't know. We've turned up some stuff in our extra investigation. That's no good if we can't get Fisk on the stand. Doesn't he have to testify? No. Now is it time to worry, Mr. Sawyer. 
I'd say now's the time. Yes. Thomas, my friend, to your health, happiness, and everlasting liberty. I'll drink to that. Mary, this is a party, not a funeral. We're celebrating here. I'm sorry. I guess my mind's still back in that courtroom. What for? Tonight, that's history. I was thinking about us, Tom. About our children. What will people say to them if you don't tell your side of what happened? No, no. It's as I've explained. Tom's under no obligation. Yes, but think what's been said already. That Tom smelled of alcohol and that he's definitely responsible for that accident. Well, even if he's cleared, it, and I'm sure he will be, what about his reputation? Well, first we get an acquittal, and then we worry about reputation. <laughs> I'll explain to the kids, Mary. I'm just gonna have to toughen our eyes, that's all. Well, what about your business contacts, Tom? What if they sour on you because of this? You know, she might have a point there, Howard. Tom, I don't want you on the stand. We can't risk botching this thing now. Botching? Mr. Webster, I think that you're underestimating my husband. He's wonderful in front of a group. Look, if I don't get up on the stand and tell my side of it, even when I'm acquitted, a lot of people are going to think I'm guilty. And then the press will get a hold of it, and they'll make me look like the Boston Strangler. Now, that was an accident. It could happen to anybody. I want to make that perfectly clear up on the stand. Tom, I'm your lawyer. Will you listen to me, please? If I was a member of that jury and the defendant didn't explain his side of the story, well, I don't know. What are you trying to do to me, Mrs. Fisk? I'm not going to put your husband on the stand. Hey, you work for me. I don't work for you. I got a reputation at stake here, mister. You sure as hell weren't worried about my reputation a second ago. I don't believe this. Look, I can handle it. Don't worry, I'll handle it. Mr. Fisk, what is your occupation? I own a construction company. Your family man? Yes. I've been married for 14 years. I have two boys. Let's talk about May 21st. Will you tell the court what you did that day? I visited my three construction sites. Now, what time did you finish work? I left early, about 3.30. Did you go straight home? No, I stopped in the Winbriar Country Club. Did you meet anybody there? Yes, I met two friends, Max Carlton and Bryce McCullough. Why did you go there? Well, Max was having some business difficulties. Did you have anything to drink at the country club? Yes, I did. What? I had two martinis. Just two, you're sure? Yes, I'm certain. Now, what time did you leave? I left at about six o'clock. Mr. Fisk, were you involved in an accident on your way home? Yes, I was. Would you describe what happened just prior to the accident? Well, I was proceeding down the street, and there's this boy on a bicycle on the right-hand side. I swung wide to avoid him, and for some reason, he fell off his bike. And while I was preoccupied with him, I, I took the turn too wide. And, and suddenly, I saw this car coming right at me. And the next thing I knew, I, somebody was helping me out of the wreck. And what did you do then? Well, I saw how bad it was and that I couldn't do anything about it. So I thought of my wife, so I, I went to telephone her. Mr. Fisk. When you left the country club, were you intoxicated? No. No, absolutely not. Do you believe that those two drinks that you had in any way contributed to or caused that accident in which you were involved? No, I certainly didn't. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Fisk, what did you do on the morning of May the 21st? I went to work. Were you in any one place the entire day? No, as I've already said, I visited all three construction sites. Do you remember eating breakfast that morning before you went to work? Yes, I took breakfast at one of the kitchen trucks. I think it was on the Monroe site. All right, that's breakfast. Do you remember eating lunch at any time? I always eat lunch at 12 o'clock. That's when I do my paperwork. Mm -hmm. Did you eat with anybody? No. How long do you take for lunch? Mm, hour or so. Mm -hmm. Do you remember where you ate? I think it was at... Uh, Harry's Beef House. While you were at Harry's, nobody joined you at your table at any time during your meal? No. 
Did you have anything to drink with you, Emil? I had a martini. How many martinis? Just one. You're sure of that? Yes, yes, I'm sure. Your Honor, I'd like these documents marked as People's Exhibit 23 and 24 for identification to have them placed before the witness. I'm also providing a copy of these documents for the defense counsel. What are those documents? This is a, uh, <clears throat> a credit card receipt and a restaurant bill. Mm -hmm. When are they dated? May 21st. Would you tell the court from what business establishment these receipts were issued? Harry's Beef House. Do you recognize the signature? Yes, it's, it's my signature. Mr. Fisk, what is the total amount of your lunch bill? $28. And of that $28, how much did you leave as a tip? $4. And how much for food? $12. How much was your bar bill for lunch on the 21st of May? $12. Excuse me? <clears throat> $12. Martinis at Harry's are $3 a piece, aren't they? Yes. $3 a piece. 12 divided by 3. You had four martinis that afternoon, didn't you, Mr. Fisk? Yes. Yes. And three hours later, you were drinking again at the Winbriar Country Club. But I only had two drinks there. I remember distinctly I ordered just two times. During happy hour, wasn't it? Yes, yes, it was happy hour. At happy hour, it's twofers. Two drinks are automatically served for the price of one. You had four martinis at the country club as well, didn't you, Mr. Fisk? I was fine when I left there. No more questions, Your Honor. I can hold my liquor. No more questions. Has the jury reached a verdict? Yes, we have, Your Honor. defendant ready to receive the verdict of this court? We are, Your Honor. Will the defendant please stand? Mr. Fisk, this jury has found you guilty of vehicular manslaughter. Prior to the determination of sentencing, Mr. Fisk, do you wish to make a statement in your own behalf? Do you wish to be heard, Mr. Webster? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Mr. Fisk is a loving husband and father of two children. He employs and houses many people. As the letters I've given you show, he's a valued member of our society. For a man of Mr. Fisk's stature, it's difficult to imagine any meaningful rehabilitation through incarceration. If Mr. Fisk is to atone, let him do so through public service work. The needs of society will be better met. Mr. Fisk will be more fairly served by imposing such a sentence. Mr. Sawyer. Your Honor, during these proceedings, I have become increasingly aware of the tremendous faith Mr. Peterson and his family have placed in our legal system. His faith has been challenged hard and often, but his trust in us has remained somehow, and I beg you not to betray that trust today. Drunk driving is a crime, not an inevitable, forgivable nuisance, and it cannot, 
It must not be tolerated. Mr. Fisk has been found guilty of vehicular manslaughter. The sentence is clear, prison. The state requests that he be placed in prison for four years, the maximum allowable time under current state statutes. So noted. I have decided, because I have all the relevant information, to pass sentence at this time rather than delay further. Mr. Webster, I have looked through Mr. Fisk's letters of reference, and I concur with you. His is a record of significant community accomplishment. And it's true. Jail isn't likely to make a better person out of anyone. So I have considered the options. But what seems clear to me is that the victim in this tragedy, Lynn Peterson, has no options at all. And I cannot excuse Mr. Fisk from preventing her from living a full, productive life. If this or any other court fails to insist on justice, justice fails. Mr. Fisk, I am convinced that a part of you stopped caring about another human life when you entered your car on May 21st. And while you may dismiss your responsibility, the court cannot dismiss the fact that you had a choice that day and you chose to drink and drive. Consequently, Mr. Fisk, I am going to impose a sentence of incarceration. And I urge you to seek the voluntary alcohol abuse counseling provided by the state's penal system. This sentence will not prevent you from living your life. But I hope and pray it will convince you of the basic responsibility free people owe to other human beings. Accordingly, Mr. Fisk, you will be committed to the state prison for a period of two years. Your license will be revoked for an additional year. So is the finding of this court. All rise. I'm going to get out of here, Judy. Mrs. Peterson. Mrs. Peterson. I want to tell you I'm sorry. And that my husband is not a bad man. I'm going to do everything I can to see that he gets help. I think we both have a long road ahead, Mrs. Fisk. I hope you find your way. You too. <laughs> 